Hi, I'm Ken Thomas of Radius Video Productions and Kenny Thomas Photography, and I just exposed my business on BizLinks TV Network. Learn more about how photography and videography can impact your business and create memories for your family. Coming up on my episode of That's My Biz on BizLinks TV. That's My Biz is sponsored by Visita Live Site and Constant Contact. Hi everyone, Pamela Alexander and welcome to another episode of That's My Biz. Like I tell you at the top of every show, we enjoy bringing to you the wonderful businesses, nonprofits, associations that we meet when we're out there networking. We want you to know all about them and we want to make sure that you reach out to these businesses as well. You can go to our website at www.bizlinks.tv to check this show out again, share it with your family and friends and colleagues, as well as check out previous episodes also. You can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash bizlinks TV. Make sure that you like it. Don't just like it though. Make sure that you share. Make sure that you give us comments that is so, so important when we're talking about social media and helping to get the word out because we want you to help us grow this uh, site and this um, show so that we can keep it going for you and bringing you more wonderful businesses. Also go to our YouTube page at our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash bizlinks TV. Make sure that you connect that you subscribe to the channel so that you can get information about upcoming episodes so that you get the information right when they are released and then also make sure that you give us some comments so that we can pass those on as well to our fantastic guests. So going into our fantastic guests we have with us Mr. Kenneth Thomas. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now he has Radius Video Productions and he has Kenny Thomas Photography. So as you can tell from the titles, he has a fantastic skill set and he works with photography and videography for both corporate and individuals. He does a lot of different types of projects and um, professional videos, original cinematography, innovative editing, and exceptional photography. So all types of photography. Yes. Now, that already is a challenge because I know there's many people, they don't like one style, they don't like weddings, they, they feel those a big headache, they may not like corporate events. Right. So kind of tell us, first of all, how did you get into this particular industry? Well, I got into this industry years ago, starting at my church. Okay. I've always had a camera in my hand. I remember my first camera was a one step, which was, you know, years ago. Yeah. But I started at my church and my media director at the time said, Hey, why don't you come and run camera? And for me it was a challenge mm -hmm. because it was a video camera. Okay. I hadn't done much video work before, but it was a challenge that I wanted to meet. Mm -hmm. And from there he taught me the ins and outs of video, um, recording video, sound recording. And there were some similarities between still photography okay. and moving um, mm -hmm. moving camera uh, photography. Mm -hmm. And it was just something I got into and I kind of stuck with. And okay. through him and training under him, you know, we did, of course, we did church services, mm -hmm. um, baptisms, and then we did, got a chance to do some work outside of the church, too. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of stuck with me. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So now, in talking about the, the types of uh, photography that you do, talk a little bit about that. Because I know there's, there's so many. When you're talking about corporate, you're talking about weddings, you're talking about church. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the types. Or, and what's kind of your favorite? My favorite is... I would say still photography and doing mm -hmm. landscapes. Okay. I can go up to the Georgia mountains mm -hmm. all day and, and shoot waterfalls, um, sunsets, mm -hmm. um, at the beach at Tabby Island, mm -hmm. just just a lot of different things like that. And I just I just kind of like an outdoor nature person. Mm -hmm. But I also like doing um, weddings also too. Weddings can be, um, you know, a little hectic because there's a lot going on. But at the end of the day, the, at the end of the day, the finished product is, you know, it's just something that, you know, you were going to look back on forever. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so many different aspects and so many different types of photography as, as far as, like you say, a corporate, mm -hmm. um, there's prom, there's just doing just headshots. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many ways that you can find your niche mm -hmm. and to really get in and, and just, you know, enjoy what you're doing. Okay. But you can, you know, a person can do a lot of more than one thing also, too. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to say, like, limit yourself, mm -hmm. but... Because you, know, you never know what comes up, and you never know who you'll meet also, mm -hmm. too. So okay. kind of spreading yourself around and doing a lot of different things, you mm -hmm. meet a lot of different people, too. Okay, I like that. And, you know, and something with this particular show, we like to, to bring in some of the business aspects. And, and one of those that I hear is in talking about finding a niche and where finding a niche is good, but also not being so rigid in it that you close the door to other opportunities that may come about. Right. I, I told one of my associates... Um, we were working together on a project, and I said, hey, you know, 
with this particular client that we had, I said, we don't know who she knows in her Rolodex. Right. She doesn't know who she knows that can help us. Mm -hmm. So trying to do and meet different people, you just mm -hmm. don't really know who they know who could mm -hmm. really take you take your business to the next mm -hmm. level. So we try and just work with anyone, accommodate anyone we can because we enjoy what we're doing, mm -hmm. but we also want to meet a lot of different people, too. Okay. Okay. So now, is it normally kind of just you out on a shoot? Do you have a whole team? Do you come with the barrage of lights and all of that? Or <laughs> it, it depends on what we're doing. Okay. But I, can, I do have the equipment to come and to bring and to set up and do a lot of different things. Um, normally, it's just me. Okay. Um, my oldest son, who I love working with, he's mm -hmm. turning 30 this year. Um, <laughs> but working with him is kind of like that father and son thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great feeling. It really is great. Mm -hmm. So he's got an inf into photography, and he's doing a lot of different things. But I do have a lot of peop other people that I can call on to okay. help me bring a project together. You know, okay. Different editors, um, different people that can come out and shoot. Because sometimes, depending on the scope of the project, mm -hmm. it can get kind of big. Okay. And you may just need to start to hand off different things to mm -hmm. different people and just kind of like work directly with the client to, mm -hmm. to assure them to say, hey, you know, everything is good, especially like with brides and, you know, just say, hey, everything is good. We have this covered. You just enjoy the day. Okay. You know, that kind of thing like that. So it's, we can pull together a team to, okay. to meet the needs. Okay. So what do you see that um, really sets you apart? There's, there's so many folks out there, so many photographers out there, videographers out there. One, how does someone go through those and find the, the one that's right for them and then what sets you apart from some of the other companies that are out there? I think one of the best things a person can do that's looking to hire a photographer or mm -hmm. videographer is word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, either from family members or from co-workers mm -hmm. to know, hey, if they saw something that they had done and they liked it, mm -hmm. just inquire with that person, hey, who did this for you? Mm -hmm. You know, how did you enjoy them? You know, were they personable? Um, did they meet your needs? Did they go above and beyond? And I would start there because it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to kind of like make, say, like cold call, mm -hmm. um, I guess like going through the old school yellow book pages mm -hmm. and just kind of find someone. I would say what sets me apart is just trying to be personable and just trying to work with someone. Um, you know, we're negotiable on price. Mm -hmm. uh, we're negotiable on what your settings are. My main thing is just I just want to get the project done, okay. and I just love to shoot. Okay. You know, that's that's my thing. I just okay. I just love to shoot. Okay. So I just really want to, hey, get the project and get it done. Uh, we just recently had a really nice project that we did with a Japanese consulate, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to do it because it was something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it. So that's, we, do, we do what we can to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So when you're out there looking for businesses, well, we heard you've got some word of mouth, now you, you know this episode, so uh, please share it with others. And you know people have an event that are coming up, and they're looking for that photographer or the videographer. Uh, make sure you share this episode with them so they can, can reach out to Ken and do some business with them. And I love that you know, you're saying you love what you do and that's part of what you want because they often say even in cooking you know the love comes through so I'm sure in photography as well that it comes through when you're you're excited and you're passionate about your your particular work right. now and I know it's needed especially again if you're doing weddings let's talk a little bit about that because I no weddings you've got you've got the bridezillas and different things like that mm -hmm. kind of talk about the experience of doing a wedding what what makes it a little bit different from the photographer side Video in a well, any part of a wedding, as mm -hmm. far as either still photography or video video in the wedding, can be different just because of the whole day. Um, there's been a lot of planning to go ahead to go forth, and when you finally get to that day, the bride and the groom, it can be it can be really stressful. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that when I sit down with a bride and a groom is I try and help them with the timing okay. of that day. Mm -hmm. So as far as maybe just taking your pictures beforehand. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if there's a large wedding party. Mm -hmm. um, if yeah. the venue, right, exactly. If the <laughs> venue, if the ceremony and reception are two in two different places, mm -hmm. we need to look at the travel time between the two. Okay. Um, what day that may be on, if there's going to be traffic, if there's going to be road work. Um, and I've had a few instances where we've started to run out of time, okay. run out of wedding time. Okay. Um, for instance, we uh, did a wedding at a uh, ceremony at a church, mm -hmm. And then this reception was at a different place, but the um, the lady for the church came in and said, hey, you guys have to leave because we're getting ready to have service. Wow. <laughs> and so the planning part, yeah, you know, it, it, it only takes a little time, but it can really save you a lot of time, mm -hmm. too. And I've had brides to tell me, hey, we're running out of limo time. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I'm, I guess I'm, that I don't like to see is that at the end of the wedding, mm -hmm. at the end of the reception, I hate to see the bride and I hate to see the newlyweds cleaning up. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, you know, I'm like, yeah. you guys go. You right. need to be gone. So right. even that in the planning stage mm -hmm. of, hey, you know, 
to maybe get someone to do it or include it in the price, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. those are just little things. But that planning of time, um, especially if you have a large wedding mm -hmm. party, can really go a long way. Okay, so it sounds like you're a great resource um, for a couple, especially those that, you know, they, they're they young, so they're just figuring all this out and kind of just doing what they see people doing, but that you're a great resource to them just from your experience of going through and doing so many weddings to really kind of help them with thinking about the things that they don't know that they don't know. Right, and, and if I can add mm -hmm. one more thing too, um, in ceremonies and in receptions too, um, there's this, Things we call like the mood light, so okay. the lights are dim, okay. and you know it has a great mood, great mm -hmm. atmosphere, and everything mm -hmm. like that. It all the time doesn't show up good on video, okay? Because you need light yeah. to shoot video. But if we can know that ahead of time, mm -hmm. we can try and make some adjustments okay. to try and preserve that atmosphere, preserve mm -hmm. that mood without your video being too dark. Okay. You okay. know, I know it looks good, right? But it. It's just right. about time to play good on camera. Okay, so it's, so it's that balance of the experience of everyone there, but then also that end product and how that end product and is going to look. Because I don't want you to be surprised, like, hey, this is too dark, but... Yeah. You know, it was dark there. Yeah. So okay. Dark okay. Dark. So now let me ask you as well when you're talking about um, weddings in particular or maybe other family type events where there's going to be either a photo album or multiple photos that are provided afterwards, how do you work with them in the production of that or what types of final pieces do you hand them? Uh, we can go sit, sit down um, with family members or the bride and groom, and, as, in, as it may be, and just discuss what final, type of final product do they want out of it. Um, for weddings, one of the things that I'm seeing a lot now that I like a lot mm -hmm. now are uh, like coffee table books, mm -hmm. hardcover yes. books. Those like are really those. nice. And it just depends on, um, of course, the size that you want, how many mm -hmm. pages that you want, but it's something different and something new. Mm -hmm. A lot of bride and grooms really just want their um, images on a CD or DVD. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it easy for them. Um, to email uh, family members who were not there, mm -hmm. and then they can print what they want when they want okay. and be more cost effective for them also too okay. that way. Um, so it, it just depends on what they want, but you know, when um, cameras and everything went digital, that made it a lot easy okay. Okay. to kind of make those things happen like that. Okay. Um, so you know, as far as delivering your product, it just it just depends on what you want to do and what cost you want to you want to pay out. Okay. All right. Great. Great. Everyone, we are learning a lot about the world of photography. We're going to take a quick break for our sponsors. When we come back, we have some a uh, few other questions we want to ask Ken. We'll be back in a moment. Meet Shelly. She can make a labradoodle look like, well, either one. And she's a marketer. Shelly uses constant contact email to spread the word about her services whether it's staying in touch with her regular customers or reaching brand new ones. It works for Shelly, and her clients are delighted. Shelly's a marketer, and all it took was constant contact. Try it free. Visita makes it easier for your business to get paid online. With Visita LiveSite, your clients can pay for any service, invoice, or scheduled appointment right from your website, social network profile, or email. You can accept any credit card or PayPal, and funds will be deposited directly to your bank account or PayPal account at no extra charge. Easily add payment options to your site that fit your brand and website design and are fully supported on mobile devices. No technical skills are required. We're back, and as always, we want to thank our sponsors. Without them, this show is not possible. So we certainly, certainly want to say a big thank you to our sponsors. And for anyone else that's interested in being a sponsor of That's My Biz, you can email us at that's my biz at bizlinks.tv. We'd love to have you and help you expose your business to the world as well. Now, we're talking with photographer Ken. And um, Ken, we want to... Uh, ask you about because we're talking about weddings and and that type of type of photography. But what are some of the challenging projects that you've had when you're talking about photography? Challenging projects, I would say my most challenging may have been a concert. Okay. Um, and, and just like again, like we had talked before in the last segment, the lighting part of it, but mm -hmm. also maybe the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, some some of the challenges of getting security passes mm -hmm. to get in. Okay. Um, but really. I can, we can take care of a lot of those challenges if we can plan ahead. Okay. Um, and I understand, you know, a lot of thing, a lot of times things come up and a lot of things change, mm -hmm. you know, like on a dime. Mm -hmm. And so we're just trying to adapt and change with those mm -hmm. things also too. But some of the small things are just, you know, having a press release, mm -hmm. um, having clearance to go in. Um, we shot like a small piece outside of the Treasury building okay. um, downtown. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as soon as I, I knew as soon as I put on my tripod, 
right. he comes security. Right. I said, hey, how you doing? I was yeah. expecting you to come on out. He mm-hmm. was like, really? I was like, yeah. You know, yeah. so hey, I'm with this group here. We're shooting this outside. He said, okay, no problem, fine. Okay. So sometimes working with authorities, mm-hmm. being pleasant, mm-hmm. um, you know, going by what they say, you know, because sometimes you can't shoot in certain places, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it's just best for all photographers and all videographers that you, you know, even people that you don't know, if you like just mm-hmm. come, you know, comply with what okay. they're saying okay. you know that can make it easier for for the next person coming out okay okay so there's some good tidbits for those of you all out and you all out there um so now what's your actual photography style i like let's say for, again for weddings i like the cinematic style okay and explain what that is cinematic is well basically you kind of have like two different two different ways to shoot a wedding like okay. a documentary style which is okay. where you shoot everything which is maybe more traditional okay. from beginning to end okay. and then the, the client gets everything from beginning to end mm-hmm. cinematic is more like a short movie okay so you may take the narration from the ceremony mm-hmm. and then you start cutting in different pieces of okay. b-roll from the time that they're getting dressed the bride getting makeup put on okay. um the groomsman helping um mm-hmm. guy with his tie mm-hmm. and you're making like a short movie that may okay. be three to five minutes long okay and so that's just a different style um, that a lot of people are liking. Right. But some people want the whole wedding. Okay. You know, so it just depends. Okay. But I like the cinematic style. It's kind of like on that movie kind of style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of gives you a lot of creativity to play right. with. You can choose different different songs right. to kind of feed in up underneath. So yeah. I, I kind of like yeah. that a lot. Yeah, that's that sounds fun. It also sounds like a lot of work because I, I know that's a lot of editing lot of because editing. he just said it's three to five minutes. Yeah. Now you've recorded the the whole day, the right? Whole day. Whether it's video or camera, mm-hmm. I mean video or photography, and then you're going to get that down and tell that story in the three to five minutes. So a lot of editing work. So now do you do the editing as well? I do edit and I do have another team of guys that can edit for me also too. Okay. Um, at one point, I know last year I got in, I had like three or four different projects on the table to mm-hmm. edit. And so, you know, when you're the, the business owner, you're doing one thing. It's like I'm editing, but I don't have time to maybe do something else. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe marketing or mm-hmm. to get out and shoot or to get out and talk to clients. Mm-hmm. So it's important to have a team to say, hey, you know, I need you to edit this for me because mm-hmm. I can't get to it. Mm-hmm. I need to get over here to do that. Okay. Um, but it, you know, as you know, editing, it is tedious. Yeah. You yeah. know, you can take that three to five minutes may end up actually being five or six hours of footage. Right. And you got to right. go through it. You got to right. find you know, those those small little key pieces that just really right. bring it out. I tell that story. I'll tell you that, like we said, take your notes because as you heard, you know, one, the planning, um, which sound like, I mean, that is very key in, in planning and, and talking with everyone ahead of time and making sure you think about those, those little pieces that you need, but also building the team. Building a team is so important. You can't do it all yourself, especially if you're going to grow that business. So I love that you made that point. Now, and even in talking about the time, how much lead time do you typically look for when you're going to be doing an event, whether it's corporate or wedding? Um, let's say for weddings, I really like to do like a month out at least. Okay. And just, again, just depends on the complexity of the wedding. Okay. So like, for instance, I believe this weekend I have like engagement photos coming up for okay. the wedding next month. And then we'll do a short video for introduction into the final video of the product. Mm-hmm. Too. So given this time of year right now, we're in spring mm-hmm. and trying to um, deal with the weather because okay. we want to do some shots outside. Right. So right. Mm-hmm. in March when we started planning this, mm-hmm. we just hadn't started blooming yet. Okay. You know, so I'm like, it's just not going to look good right. everything is still bare right. so let's just she can be pushing on off in the spring mm-hmm. and get some really nice stuff outside and so knowing some different locations with covered bridges mm-hmm. um, um different plants that are blooming like azaleas and mm-hmm. things like that gonna kind of you know really give it a nice mm-hmm. look so again that planning part but trying to start out as far as you can mm-hmm. If you can, mm-hmm. really does help. Okay. Um, okay. So a month out or so for weddings for corporate events, those are more controlled. Okay. Uh, they're like inside um, a group of people coming from out of town for you know and so it's more like a boardroom mm-hmm. kind of thing so those are a lot mm-hmm. a lot easier you know maybe a two camera set up a three camera set up you know depending on what they need mm-hmm. and you can go from there okay great so now we talked about a lot of different types of events I'm sure tons of experience I can imagine the different stories that you have share with us maybe one of your more hilarious uh, stories um it's got to be a wedding okay um there was a gentleman getting married, and 
he just broke down at the altar. He just he just really broke down. But he broke down so so much at the altar that he lost his train of thought. He oh, started okay. repeating what the minister started repeating. Okay. You know, and he looked around. He was like, "Oh well, I just I just thought that's what I was supposed to do." <laughs> you know, but it was funny because his groomsmen they were mm -hmm. all family, of course, and okay. they just let him have it. Oh. They let him have it. Yeah. But it was a it was a beautiful moment. Though. Okay. But it was just it was just funny. It's like one okay. of those things you kind of like want to see. Um, in America's Funniest Video or okay. something like that. You okay. know? But it was it was really funny. You okay. know, it was just just just, just a beautiful moment, but fun. Okay, okay, so very authentic, but yes. at the reception, no, right. it's all no holes yeah, barred, no right? Bar. No holes barred. <laughs> I love that. I think we've seen some of those out there on YouTube. Right, right. So we're going to look for some of the credits yeah. now to see yours out there. <laughs> um, now, in, in talking about that, and in talking about, especially in talking about weddings, how do you get people comfortable, uh, you know, with the camera or even just get them to be natural? Because I can imagine the people, you've got the photo bombs going on or you've got the people that don't want to look at the camera. How do you how do you get people comfortable with the cameras being there? I think the I think, a, well, I think now in our day and age, mm -hmm. people are, are used to it. Okay. They're used to seeing cameras, especially camera phones. Okay. And so they know an event like that. They know that you're there, mm -hmm. you know, to document the wedding or mm -hmm. to, to photograph the wedding. And so they're used to you being there. But you still run into people who, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, right. I'm like, <laughs> and I, and I kind of joke with them because I'm like, oh, you want it? You know, right. by the FBI, you know, right. I'd not even be here if something right. going to happen. And so I just, I just banter back and forth. Okay. I just, I just play with them because okay. I'm, I'm going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. doing what I like to do, so I'm just going to have a good time. And I say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, if you don't want to just put you on camera, I won't. Okay. If I actually did, I'll make sure I cut you out and edit. Okay. But I'm going to have a good time. Right. You know, but right. I, I just mess with them back and forth, you know. Okay. And then you have the hands that love to jump in front mm -hmm. of the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm like, hey, you know, you give me more stuff to work with, right? No problem. I okay. Can deal with it. Okay. You know? So now, how do you deal with and talk about that? And you've got the the camera phones now, and everyone's a photographer, and mm -hmm. but right. you're the professional photographer that's hired to be there at that event, and you know, you have an end product that you have to deliver. How do you deal with it? And this is especially for those out there who are are also aspiring photographers to, to be in the business of photography right. and videography. How do you deal with the crowd and now the, the phones and everyone doing that when you're the one that needs to, to get the right shots? Well, I think the first thing um, a photographer, videographer has to realize is just be confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you were hired to do the event, okay. so be confident you're going you're gonna to do the event. Uh, let's take, for instance, a wedding and doing the wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, most people are going to be, most of the time, in their seats, and they're mm -hmm. going to film from their seats. I have had a few times where people have gotten up with an big iPad and walked straight <laughs> up, you know, oh and, done it. and I'm I'm cool with it. I'm right. going to let you, you know, do your thing and then move back. Mm -hmm. Doing weddings, I don't like to do weddings with one camera, okay. and I don't like to do weddings with one camera mainly because of that reason, because you have mm -hmm. nothing else to cut to in editing. Okay. So in the instance like that, a two camera shoot or three camera shoot is best because if that person got into that camera um, angle of view, they're more likely not in the other camera angle mm -hmm. of view. Okay. So I can just cut to the other camera in editing. Okay. So I don't like to use one camera. But again, you got to be courteous. Mm -hmm. You got to be kind. Yeah. And I just, I just let them do it. Mm -hmm. you know, hey, you know, because yeah. that's, that's what, that's what we live in now. Everybody mm -hmm. has a, a camera. Mm -hmm. And let them give the shots. I don't. I don't mind. Okay. Okay. I, I don't mind. I love that. So now there are several people I'm sure that are out there that have been thinking about. Uh, going into the photography more formally, that like I said, they've been dabbling and all that, mm -hmm. but really want to now take that that next step and make it a business. What are some tips you would share with them on how to get started? One of the first tips I think I would share is um, to get a mentor. Okay. Um, even if you've been shooting for a while and you just really want to get the business started now, mm -hmm. get a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, join a club. Um, I'm a member of a meetup club. Okay. Um, and it's just something where, you, again, you can meet a lot of different people with a lot of different styles, okay. a lot of different equipment, a lot of different techniques, and you learn something from everybody. Okay. Um, the next thing is be legal. Mm -hmm. be, I love be, that. be legal. <laughs> be, be legal. Um, it's easy to print up the business cards uh -huh. and to get started, and that's fine. But at some point, you're gonna have to be legal. Mm -hmm. And think of it. And think of it in terms of this way: if something happens. Mm -hmm. The way you will have your business set up may protect you and your family okay. and your family assets. Mm -hmm. So be legal. Okay. It's it's not a whole lot to 
pay for a business license. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, those things are not that expensive, yeah. but they can save you in the long run. Mm -hmm. And then just get out and just start working. Where I got really, one of the ways I got started doing weddings is that I, I subbed or kind of helped with another wedding photographer. Hey, okay. let me tag okay. along with you. Let me take some extra shots, mm -hmm. you know, that you may or may not use, mm -hmm. but let me start to get the feel for it. Because mm -hmm. up until that time, I really hadn't gone yeah. to any weddings. Okay. You know, but my wife, Mm -hmm. She was going to weddings and, you know, you do right. this like this and you do this like that. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, you know. But, of course, I, did, I learned how mm -hmm. the structure of weddings go. Right. I've seen different weddings. We've done different nationality of weddings mm -hmm. to kind of see how those go, too. Okay. So there's, you know, there's little differences okay. in between. But, you know, we had a chance to do a Pakistani wedding. I'm like, okay. No idea, but thanks yeah. to YouTube, I got a chance to see some things, okay. and they just kind of start reaching out to some people. Hey, have you done this type of wedding before? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I need to do? Okay. What 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 can't I do? Okay, those things like mm -hmm. that. Because again, you know, you got to satisfy the client. It's yeah. not going to be your regular wedding that that I'm used to seeing. Right. It's, it's going to mm -hmm. be totally different. Mm -hmm. So, getting a mentor, um, you know, joining the club, being mm -hmm. legal are like the first mm -hmm. things I would I would really say um, to do. And then you know just. Just start getting someone to critique your work too. Not mm -hmm. family members, <laughs> but somebody you don't know that can give you right. a great critique. You know, family okay. members could be, oh yeah, they're gonna love everything you do. Right, right. But get somebody you know who can, who can really tell you the real deal. Say, you know, whether it's you know tough criticism or mm -hmm. uh, good criticism, but get somebody that you know that that doesn't yeah. know you that can really give you good criticism criticism of your work. That's good. That's some good tips. And for those of you out there, I hope you took those. Those Again, just go back and listen to it again and again, especially if you're looking uh, to get in this type of business. Now, before we close, I want to talk to those who need a photographer or a videographer. Um, first of all, what should they know and the best way to work with a photographer or a videographer? I think they need to maybe sit down with whoever they're going to choose. Okay and talk about what their expectations are, okay. you know, depending on what type of what type of event it is. You know, just say, tell the photographer what you want to see, mm -hmm. uh, what you're looking for. And if you can give that person some examples okay. yeah. so they would kind of know if they can meet those expectations or not, then your end product is going to be what you're looking for. Okay. Um, I had a client send me a YouTube uh, video of a wedding look that they wanted to okay. do. So that helps me out a lot. Mm -hmm. But just sitting down, meeting with people, and just telling them what, the, what your expectations are. You know, if it's a family reunion, if it's a wedding, it's a, if it's a corporate event, mm -hmm. just say, you know, we want to do this. Mm -hmm. We want to do that. You know, we want, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. um, and just see can they do it because they may have to bring on a second shooter mm -hmm. um, to the site at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, because one of the things we've done at a corporate event is that we shot still images, but we also had some wide shooting video too. Mm -hmm. And one person you know, can't do both at the same time and really cover the whole event. Mm -hmm. So just sitting down and right. again planning out what you want it to look like is going to okay. you know, help a lot. Yeah, great. Well, we want you all to do business with Mrs. or Kenneth Thomas here. So we want to make sure that they know how to get in touch with you. Uh, please give everyone your contact information. Okay. You can reach me um, at at radiusvideoproductions.com or my phone number is 678-549-1043 um, I'm on Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter at Ken Cinema love that Ken Cinema and Instagram the perfect place for you right mm -hmm. people can see his wonderful work mm -hmm. uh, so definitely make sure that you uh, reach out Ken thank you so much for joining Thank us you today. For me. Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone, again, make sure that you reach out to Ken and do some business. We know you have uh, something coming up and you're going to need those great professional uh, photographs or vi videos done. So please make sure that you uh, get his contact information. Again, you'll have that on the screen and uh, reach out to him and do some business. You can watch this episode again at www.bizlinks.tv. Make sure that you share it with your family and your friends and your colleagues. Also, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash bizlinks TV. Like it, share it, comment, and then hop on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash BizLinks TV. When you're out there, make sure that you subscribe. That way you'll stay up to date on all the release of our episodes that are available. And then uh, make sure that you also give us some thumbs up because we do want to hear from you and we want to keep growing this. We want to keep this show uh, going for you. So give us feedback and let us know um, what you think. And we definitely want to share your information and your comments with our guests as well. I'm Pamela Alexander with BizLinks TV Network, exposing your business to the world.